In a previous video, we learned how to predict if a bond was nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. To do that, we looked up the electronegativity values of the two atoms forming the bond, and then we subtracted them, and we used 0 and 1.7 as benchmarks. Okay, let's look at a molecule of oxygen. That's one atom of oxygen bonded to another atom of oxygen. If we look up the electronegativity value, you can see that it's 3.5. So 3.5 minus 3.5 equals 0, 0.0. So the bond between oxygen and oxygen here is going to be nonpolar covalent. Let's look at another example. Hydrogen bromide. Hydrogen's value is 2.1. Bromine's value is 2.8. So let's subtract those two values and get the difference. 2.8 minus 2.1, that equals 0 0.7. So the bond between hydrogen and bromine is polar covalent because it falls between 0 and 1.7. Let's look at one more. Sodium bromide. Sodium's electronegativity value is 0.9. Bromine's, once again, is 2.8. So 2.8 minus 0 0.9, the difference is 1.9. 1.9 is greater than 1.7. So we would call that bond ionic. Remember, in a nonpolar bond, electrons are shared equally. In a polar bond, electrons are shared, but they're shared unequally. And in an ionic bond, the electrons are shared so unequally that, in fact, the electron is transferred. Students are often um, feel like this number 1.7 is arbitrary. It's not arbitrary, but there is some room for, I guess, some wiggle room. Um, Let's pretend that this is short over here, and this is tall over here. There is no one particular height that you can define as the landmark between short and tall. In the same way, this 1.7 is kind of like a guideline. So over here is completely nonpolar, and over here, the electron has been transferred completely. And everything along the way is simply a continuum. And the greater the number, the more ionic or the more likely it is that the electron will be completely transferred.